Well, this morning we have another opportunity to uh, ask the pastor a, a question. Oh, that's new. For five <laughs> cents. <laughs> hmm. You get what you pay for. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's see how much we get this morning. <laughs> uh, so we, uh, we got a good question here, and uh, we're just going to kind of read it off to you and let you respond to it, and we'll go from there. It says, why? Because. Okay, okay, just checking. All right. But why is the God of the Old Testament angry and punishing? And the God of the New Testament is kind and loving. And if God is kind and loving, then does anyone go to hell and why? <laughs> That's 10 cents worth, I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what was it? No, 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 I got it. I got it. Um, <clears throat> Hell. Yeah, no. no. But first, it was that. Why is, why is God angry. all angry and nasty and whatnot? Uh, and then not. Actually, the Gnostics asked that question. The Gnostics thought uh, that the God that they saw in the Hebrew Scriptures was sort of incompatible with the God of the New Testament. And they, con they concluded that there must be two gods, a good God and a bad God. And um, the, uh, that was not the majority opinion in the early church, and so that was considered a heresy. And, and uh, so councils uh, started hammering out creeds, which is why uh, there's a creed that says we believe in one God. Uh, the, the Gnostics thought, well, there's a good God and a bad God. The good God made the heavenly stuff. The bad God made the earthly stuff. And so the creed says, we believe there is one God, creator of heaven and earth, all that is, seen and unseen. And so the, the creeds were actually sort of a, a, trying to silence the, this idea that there was a good God and a bad God. Uh, heavenly, you know, heavenly things are good and earthly things are bad. And so that's, uh, uh, but they were, the, the the church councils decided that that was not uh, the way. The truth is, the reason we see an angry uh, God in one set of Scripture, and then that God sort of mellows out as God matures, as God gets older, as the community gets older, as the tradition ages, same, re same reason why uh, there's there the terrible twos versus, you know, mellow middle age, um, <laughs> that, that people express themselves according to who they are, according to their cultural norms, according to the traditions they've inherited. And so I don't think God has changed. I think God is always good. God is omnipresent goodness. And yet uh, we haven't always understood that. And so people are always talking about God using the language they have and the understanding they have. Also, according to their cultural norms, they're all trying to say a similar thing, I think. They're all trying to express the goodness of God. So in the Hebrew Bible, when we read an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, that isn't saying go out and, and make everyone blind and knock their teeth out. What that is saying is if someone does something to you, don't respond in greater measure. It's a way of keeping people from being too abusive, too aggressive, too hateful. And so since we worship a loving God, you should never uh, treat people worse than they've treated you. Now, Jesus thousand years later, uh, raises the bar a little bit and says, you know what, somebody hits you, just turn the other cheek, walk away if you can. He's still confronted injustice. He still, you know, made a scene in the temple and whatnot. But uh, he wasn't a weakling. He wasn't uh, overly passive. But he also was saying there's, you know, if you really just hate someone, that's the same motivation that causes you to murder. So it's not just enough to say I didn't kill someone. If you're unkind, if you're abusive, if you're unjust, you're actually perpetuating the same feelings that lead to murder. So don't do any of that. So the way people express themselves have evolved over time, hopefully continue to evolve. But the idea has always been God is good. One power, one presence, God the good, omnipotent. I just heard that recently somewhere um, <laughs> from you guys. And then what was the other part? Some of this hell. Hell, stuff. there's no hell. Okay. Um, there's that. The, uh, and it's true. The, um, uh, hell is a metaphor for the feeling of being separate from God. But in reality, we can't be separate from God because God is omnipresent. Uh, hell actually was, H-E-L was the name of the Norse goddess of the underworld. Um, uh, the idea that there was a good, that good and evil battling each other, and if you're on the right side, you get to go to paradise, the bad side go, goes to the evil. That comes from Zoroastrianism, from the Persian exile. And so these are other concepts that were uh, borrowed over time, and I think originally used as metaphors. Unfortunately, we started literalizing the metaphors. 
but hell means to be separate from God, and that isn't possible. And so what we're trying to do isn't to get you a good seat in first class on the afterlife flight. We're trying to uh, keep you from experiencing needless hellish experiences here and now, because here and beyond, we're always going to be in the presence of God. Well, thank you, and would you think I was seeing you, Pastor, for answering the question this morning?